Welcome back everybody. Video three I'm loading for the seven millimeter PRC. Today's video is going to be focused solely on the Berger Elite Hunter 195 grain EOL bullet. There is other hammer hunter tip bullet testing that's going to be done, but I don't have them on hand yet. So today is, it, it works out well. I needed 50 pieces of brass to do what I wanted to do. And here I've got 50 pieces of brass. So we're ready to go. Powders are going to be testing today. H1000, Rotumbo, and N570. We've shot H1000 and Rotumbo previously. We shot some groups with Rotumbo. It did quite well. We were well under pressure and well under velocity. H1000, we've never reached velocity that we're close and we've not seen any pressure. N570, I've never loaded, so this is going to be interesting. I dredge the internet for people's load data, and I know that that can be sketchy. What I came up with was a general consensus that somewhere between 72 and 72 and a half grains with this bullet is absolute max. So I decided that what we would do today is in that N570, I'll load 69 grains, 69 and a half, 70, 70 and a half, 71, all just one round each. That's A, to see where we're at pressure and velocity wise up under what we're going to be loading for uh, testing for groups. And it's also to foul the barrel. Works out well. Just shoot those ones, see what the speeds are, make sure we don't have any pressure. Then my intent is to start shooting three shot groups at 71.3 grains, 71.6, 71.9, 72.2, and 72.5. So we've got, you know, like 20 rounds total there with N570. In H1000, we're going to be starting out at 68.4 grains and going up in 0.3 grain increments, uh, 68.7, 69, 69.3, 69.6, three round groups and look for what we can get. I don't know if we're going to get to shoot all those. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't know if we're going to get above 69 grains there. I think we're going to top out on pressure, but we may be there on velocity. We left out at, uh, where are we at? 68. Five grains gave us 2,875 feet a second last time. So here we're starting one tenth of a grain under that and then going on up over it. So I think we're going to do well, but I don't know if we're going to get to shoot all those. Rotumbo, we're kind of doing the same thing. Last time with Rotumbo, we left off at 70 grains, gave us 2,886 feet a second. Here we're going to start at 69.7, go up to 70, 70.3, 70.6, 70.9. So that gives you an idea. I'll post today's workup data here. And then I'm just going to get to work. I'm going to load one of each, whatever for you to see. And that'll be it. This is real short. Not a lot of bench time today. Get right to the range and get these fired and uh, record our groups. What I'd like to do in the end, because we've already got like a known load in LRT. I can't remember what the load was. That looks like 76.4 grains LRT. My gosh, it's a lot of powder. Gave us 2,912 feet a second. SD a 3.4 ES 8.7, a 0.35 inch group. I really like that one. So what I want to do is kind of find what I feel are the best loads in each of these powders. And then we're just going to have a little bit of like a playoff bracket and figure out which one actually goes the distance and does what it needs to do. That's going to be a, a follow on video. Obviously, we need to get there with these three. I hope that we get there within these 50 rounds. That would be outstanding. Figure out what's what and then uh, can go on to a playoff bracket. That'd be sweet. And speaking of cutting down on bench time, this brass is all done. I did all the prep work. They're already primed. They're ready to go. Nothing interesting this time around. Shoulders all bumped out, bumped them all back to 2.8855, which I know is a ridiculous number to try to hit because it's a half a thousandth, but that's what I wanted. And I was very successful. I've got a couple of them that ended up at 2.8850. And I think I have one that maybe ended up at 2.8860. I'm not going to sweat that. There's like three of them here that aren't identical. The next, it was very interesting. Next did grow just a little bit. They went from 2.270 to 2.271. There were a couple of them that were a half thousandth longer than that. So I actually nipped them. They're all exact. This brass is behaving real well. I like it. Just wanted to point that out. No bench time on brass prep today.
Okay, all loaded up and ready to go. A couple things go over real fast. This was a different lot of bullets. And Berger is known for their consistency, but I will say sometimes between lot numbers, you will find some differences. And these definitely had to be seated differently to get my desired overall length. So I had to change the CBTO, no big deal. What I did was got down to an OAL that barely made the mag and that's what I'm running with. We'll see how they shoot. Um, three shot groups. I had a guy ask me why the three shot groups. I addressed it previously, but I'll tell you it's a pencil weight barrel. It gets hot really fast and everyone that I've watched shoot this for more than three rounds has suffered some thermal uh, point of impact shift in their fourth and fifth rounds. So just not gonna do it. The second thing to address there is I don't take five minutes between shots. I'll be five, I'll be 10 minutes between strings. But when I shoot a group of three, I shoot them mm, nearly hunting conditions. Fire a shot, acquire the target, go through my ritual, squeeze the next shot. That's how I do it because that's how it's going to happen in the field. That's what I want to replicate. So if we're going to have some big problems from firing it too quickly or the barrel's too warm in the third shot, so be it. I want it to show itself because that's what's going to happen in the real world if you have an animal that you've got to hit more than once, more than twice. There are plenty of people that will say, well, that doesn't happen. And if you're a sportsman or a woodsman worth his weight in salt, that won't happen to you. Well, I can tell you there is a rule of thumb on moose, and that is if they are still standing and they are mobile forward, you need to keep putting them in them. That's the way it goes. They're a big old bullet sponge, and sometimes you're going to have to give it to them. So in this case, I'm looking at what will this rifle do through three rounds? Truth be told, a guy could put three in the mag, one in the pipe, carry it with four. Not sure that's the way to go. But anyway, I just want to see what it does in that, I guess what you would call rapid fire, though it's not rapid. It's, it's five seconds, 10 seconds between shots, but I'm not allowing in any cooling time. That's what I'm trying to talk about here. So anyway, enough babbling. These are all loaded up and ready to go. You know what's next? Take them to the range, make them fly straight. So we made it out to the range. Hot, sticky day out here, 86 degrees Fahrenheit, 83% humidity. We got a target at 100 yards, shot marker set up, and a target cam running.
back on the bench with the brass, not much to see here. There's a couple of them that have a minor polish on the case head. I had a few rounds that were uh, heavier than normal bolt lift. They were all in the upper loadings, the highest charge weights for each of these three powders happened in all three of them. So it looks like I hit actual limit in all three powders. At least I know where I stand on that. All right, let's have a look at the targets one powder at a time. Here's N570. Nothing but good things to say about this powder. Uh, 71.3 grains through 71.9, they're all touching. That's good stuff. At 72.2, we got up to 2,952 feet a second and a 0.54 inch group, but they strung vertical. And then at 72 and a half grains, got to 2,961 feet a second, which I didn't think we'd ever see. And they opened up quite a bit. So yeah, an acceptable group and a different rifle, but the way this is shooting at slower speeds, there's no justification for going hotter. So at least for like the sake of hunting or the playoff bracket, I'm going to focus on 71.9 grains there that gave us 2,938 feet per second, SD a 1.4, ES a 3.1, and a 0.3 inch group. The reason I select that versus like 71.3 grains that has a slightly prettier group there at 0.23 inches is the difference in velocity. Understanding that it's an 86 degree day, shoot these rounds and get this velocity, it can be expected that the weather, unless there's nuclear war going on, is not gonna be that warm in the northern tip of Newfoundland in the middle of September. Knowing that I'm likely to lose some velocity based on powder temperature, I'm pretty safe to lose like 35 feet a second here and still be in this sweet spot between these three loads that you see up there, 71.3, 71.6, 71.9. Looking at those velocities, all being in that little sweet spot, I'm happy to maintain that. I'm going to concentrate on 71.9 for our little bracket and for future testing. And if I decide that it's too hot, then I can always go back down. But right now I'm really liking the 2,938 feet a second. I didn't think we'd get that hot. And I certainly didn't think I'd get that out of N570. Moving on to Rotumbo, this powder shoots good. I had a couple problems here and I marked them and I think you probably saw that from the range footage. That first group, too slow. A decent group, but not great. That second group would have been much better if I would not have uh, fought my sandbags while clock watching. I was just watching the clock too closely. I was trying to speed, I was trying to let the rifle cool off well between strings, but when I got to a string, I was trying to shoot it much too fast. There you've got some decent numbers. I mean, decent velocity, but it's still too slow. But a 1.2 SD and an ES of three, that group would never have been 0.71 inches if I hadn't screwed up that shot. That next load there, 70.3 grains, 2,914 feet a second, an acceptable velocity for certain. Uh, bad numbers. I had one round in there that was uh, exceptionally fast, but somehow they all three tucked into 0.51 inches. Can't complain about that. 70.6 grains gave us 2,921 feet per second, SD of 1.1, ES of 2.5, a 0.62 inch group. But again, I'd like to point out, I shanked the third shot here. It's my belief that that third shot would have been real close, if not touching, or maybe in that same hole. That's a good load. And this is the load that I'm going to concentrate on and bring forward into the bracket or at least future testing with. I think that my error there made that look really bad. All indications are that's a good spot for that powder and that bullet. Lastly, H1000 started out real good. Again, too slow, but a 68.4 grains giving you a 0.42 inch group looks pretty good. Then opened right up at 68.7, a 0.9 inch group, worst group of the day. Nobody knows why. I know it wasn't marksmanship. Those three shots, I was very watchful after what happened in those two groups with Rotumbo. At 69 grains, we got to 2,922 feet per second, ST a 3.3, ES of 7.9, a 0.39 inch group. And this is the load that I'm gonna take forward into the bracket and do future testing with. So here are the four loadings I chose for the bracket. N570, 71.9 grains, H1000, 69, Rotumbo, 70.6, LRT, 76.4. You see all the data there. They're the best groups at each powder shot. Even though Rotumbo, that's not a good representation of what it's capable of there because I shanked that shot. I have all the confidence in the world that that was the one in Rotumbo. So that's what we're going to be working with. If you've got other recommendations, please put it in the comments below. If you liked a different load or you've got some rationale for why I should abandon one and pick up another, let me know. I'm happy to explore it or maybe even swap one out and just do it. 
In the meantime, I've got my hammer hunter tipped 162 grain bullets on hand, and I have to decide what I'm going to do the next video on, whether it will be this bracket and, and future test or further testing with these four powders and this uh, Berger 195 grain EOL bullet, or if I'm going to do a video on the hammer hunter tipped 162 grain next. Can't do both, got to pick one or the other, so kicking that around. There are going to be at least three more videos in this series. So thanks for coming by, everybody. I appreciate you being here. Hope to catch you in the next video. And until then, take care and shoot straight.